WebM versus H.264. YouTube and a lot of Google properties have been moving to using WebM as the video compression format, and that was really to avoid some of the licensing fees that come with H.264. Now, I've talked before about why it is that WebM won't be able to get around those licensing fees because WebM didn't patent or own the patents on a lot of the technologies. But I really wanted to talk about what the quality differences were between WebM and H.264 and how the code that is part of WebM limits how good the quality can be. And rather than picking some of the very high level mathematics that go into that, and there's a lot of those that are related to why WebM takes more CPU power to do the same things that H.264 can do, and really talk about some of the more approachable ones. So the first limitation of WebM is that it only allows for three reference frames. Now, when you're working with video compression, you're looking at frames near the frame that you have just encoded to say, what is alike in this frame to frames around it? So imagine that my arm's here, and then my arm's here in the next frame. If the rest of me didn't move, you really only have to encode the difference between my arm up and my arm out. And you can use the rest of me as a reference from the previous frames and can say, use the information from this frame and make the couple of small changes for the stuff that moved. H.264 supports 16 frames of reference, meaning that depending on where you are in the series, you could be looking eight frames ahead or eight frames behind for a frame that looks the same. So if I'm waving my hand back and forth and it takes six frames to get from one end to the other, I can use any of those frames as reference and I can just keep saying, use this frame, use this frame, use this frame. And I can save a lot of encoding bandwidth based on the similarities between the frames. But if you're only allowed three frames for reference, you really only get one frame either side of the encoded frame that you're looking at. This is a serious limitation when you're talking about fast motion video or scenes that have things like strobe lights in them or you know, a lot of other combinations where looking ahead or behind, you can find similar content in the frame. The next part of where WebM suffers is that its loop filter is written wrong. A loop filter is designed to hide some of that macro blocking, the squares that you see when the compression really can't keep up and the picture starts to degrade. Well, a loop filter goes through and says, how much difference is there between two squares and blurs the line between those and says, between this block and this block, let's blur the edge by 20% or however much in order to obfuscate the fact that there is that artifact. The resulting image is that instead of your video getting blocky when this starts to happen is that it starts to get smudgy or soft. Well, the WebM loop filter is written such that it doesn't know whether the loop filter has already been applied to the previous frame. So if you go through an action scene where there's 10 seconds of blockiness, every frame in that segment will get progressively smudgier. Whereas in H.264, it says, hey, we're going to smudge this one. There's a line here. Apply this amount of smudge, blur, obfuscation, whichever word you like and don't do it again until we've reset the loop filter. So that's a serious problem in the way WebM works. The last one is that WebM doesn't have any what's called B frames, which means that it can only look at frames in the past. It can't look at frames in the future. If you've got a scene that is going from black to fully colored, you know, like you're coming back from a fade, often you want to look at frames in the future for the detail that's included in the shot because the first frame after the black is really just the fourth frame after the black darkened a great deal. And a B frame can add a lot of efficiency in those cases. Because of all of these inefficiencies in WebM, it's never going to be as good of quality per 
bit, you know, at the, whatever bandwidth you're trying to encode at, as H.264 is. And that's before we talk about any of the math problems that come with WebM not being H.264 and or H.263 or any of the other H.2 codecs that people have optimized their silicon in order to make very fast encoding and decoding so that you can have that hardware acceleration that's built into your iPhone, your Android tablet, any of the hardware devices that are playing back video that you know three years ago wouldn't have had enough CPU power to do so.